It was the second week in a row that gave Packers fans a win that was a bit too close for comfort. But as they say, a win is a win. We'll toast to Brandon McManus as well as the rest of the team for this week's victory and look ahead to the last game before the bye, which is a big one against the divisional rival Detroit Lions. We'll also hear feedback from all of you as well. All this coming up next on your Packers Fan Podcast. Welcome to another edition of your Packers Fan Podcast, the show by and for fans of your 13-time NFL champion Green Bay Packers. Me, I'm Wayne Henderson, and I'm thankful that it's beginning to look a lot like the bye week. After we beat the Lions, stand beside... Wait a minute. It is way too early for Christmas songs, sir. That's a bye week song. I am going to wrap up a newspaper, whap you on the nose with it, and say (laughs) no. (laughs) No. (laughs) I'm Scott Clark from the Gaming Outsider Podcast, and we may have come away with a W this week, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't getting a little hot under the collar this last week especially when it comes to next week's matchup, but I'm doing my best to keep the faith and stay positive. This is episode 306 of the Packers Fan Podcast. We will recap the Packers and Jaguars game. What did we like? What did we not like very much? Let's talk about it. Also, listener feedback is one of our favorite things to share with you. It is so good. And then we'll preview the Packers divisional matchup against the Lions at Lambeau Field. It's our last game before the Packs bye week. And my good friend Scott Clark is going to share some keys to a Packers victory with you. And speaking of the game, let's go ahead and talk about the leaders in the Packers Lions game. First off, passing Jordan Love was 14 for 22 with 196 yards, no touchdowns, but and one interception. Uh, that is a big reason why his passer rating was so low at 73.3, but more on that later. On the rushing side, Josh Jacobs led the charge with 25 carries for 127 yards, receiving. Kraft, pack and cheese himself, Tucker Kraft, three catches for 78 yards and a touchdown, his longest being 67 yards, which was a really key moment towards the end of the game. And on the defensive side, Edrin Cooper, nine tackles, five of them all on his own, and one sack. So outside of Jordan Love, some really great numbers there. Let's talk about the opening offensive drive. We had a timeout called only after two minutes and four seconds of the game had expired. Ugh. That is really early for a timeout, and it seems to be our new MO, and I don't think I like it very much. How about you, Wayne? No, I'm not a huge fan, and I wonder if maybe it's just us, the fans, that are frustrated by it, and maybe if we ask LeFleur, he's like, look, we just do what we got to do. We're going to take timeouts whenever we need to. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we did have a holding penalty that negated a 16-yard run by Jacobs. Had some good momentum, but the penalty just killed it. We were forced to punt, and the Jaguars started inside their own 20. And this was when we started seeing signs of wear on Jordan Love. He was limping off the field after the last play before the punt. It looked to be a non-impact injury, which we learned a little bit later was a groin injury. Um, Again, more on that later, but this was the first time we saw it, and it was definitely making me a little bit nervous. Yeah, right off the bat, things were not looking good in Florida. And on the opening defensive drive, quick three and out, The Jaguars punter kicked it out of bounds inside the one-yard line. He can't catch a break sometimes. Unfortunately, the Packers also had a quick three and out and gave the Jags solid field position right at the 50-yard line. Uh, You know, another quick three and out. But, you know, for a while there, it didn't seem like anything was really going to happen in this game. No, it really wasn't. Maybe the weather was a factor. Maybe they were a little overconfident. Not sure. But uh, McKinney... Thankfully, had a momentum-changing interception in the second quarter. This came right after Love's interception the series before. This was McKinney's sixth pick in eight games. Six interceptions. Man, I just love that those stats keep just bumping up and up and up. Uh, We also got a pass interference penalty in our favor to give uh, give him a first down inside the five-yard line. This led to the first score by the Packers in the game, which was a short run by Jacobs, giving the Packers a 7-0 to zero lead early on. We will take it at this point. And you alluded to Tucker Craft earlier, that 67-yard catch putting Green Bay in scoring position. Incredible yards after the catch. He started going at an angle and wasn't brought down until the 10-yard line. An illegal shift penalty then kept us out of the end zone. We had to settle for a field goal, but it was good. Our kicker was good, giving us the 10-0 lead at that point. 
I think it was Dan Dyler on Facebook that uh, changed it from Kraft Pack and Cheese to Kraft Yak and Cheese. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Josh Jacobs responds to the Jaguars' first lead of the game by turning the tables once again. Eight plays, 80 yards, only one of them being a passing play. He had an awesome run up the middle for 38 yards for a score. Man, he really made some great moves on that play to make it all happen. It was really awesome to see. This was his longest run of the year as well, and the Packers led at this point 20-17. to 17. And speaking of momentum changes, the fumble recovery near the start of the fourth quarter really switched it around again in our favor. Trevor Lawrence, under pressure, lost the football, recovered by Devontae Wyatt at the five-yard line, led to one of the easiest touchdown passes of this season to Tucker Craft giving us the 27 to 17 lead. And then I was starting to feel a little bit relief, but you know, these days, unless we were up by at least 17 points, I'm not going to relax too much, Scott. <laughs> yeah. But thankfully our uh, new kicker came through for us once again, second week in a row with a game winning field goal. He's still perfect as a green Bay Packer gave the Packers the final win of 30 to 27. Whoo. I was uh, feeling a little nervous, but really glad to see that final kick go through to, to be our dagger. I, I don't like that the daggers are coming in the last final seconds of the game, man. <laughs> yes. uh, I, I would really like it just to be, you know, a little bit more close, a little less close for comfort. Yeah, here's hoping that one of the next games that we have, we're going to have a dagger somewhere near the beginning of the third quarter. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Just relax and enjoy the rest of the game. And some of the lowlights, you know, the specifics on them. Jordan Love's first interception of the game, once again, throwing into coverage. At least this time, it was only single coverage. And it kind of looked like the defender's second foot was out of bounds, but the replay didn't show a whole lot. But I was just thinking, you know, we were so close to getting a touchdown right then. And, you know, throwing it, what was it, around the four-yard line, five-yard line? That's not where you yeah. want to throw an interception. It, it, it seemed a little suspect that they refused to show that replay more than like once. At Jaguar Stadium. Yeah. Coincidence? No. I, 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 it looked like the toe was out of bounds and I just wanted a closer look at it. And every angle they did show was like you couldn't see the toe. It was, oh, it looks good there. But the one that we saw when it was live looked like it was out of bounds. Anyway, I'm not going to split hairs. We won the game. Uh, I would like to know what happened to the defense in the second half of the second quarter. Up to this point... The Packers' defense kept the Jaguars from getting a single first down until halfway through the second quarter. That's pretty awesome defense. All of a sudden, they let Jacksonville run all, all over them, including a rushing touchdown by Trevor Lawrence. Uh, gave them the score, but the Packers still did lead 10-7 to at this point. And then in the third quarter, the Packers' defense continued to feel a little bit, I don't know, under the heat and humidity or whatever, Jags were still running all over him, maybe even just walking all over him, whatever it is. But 94-yard drive with Lawrence throwing four for four, a beautiful pass from Lawrence to Thomas Jr., and the Jaguars took their first lead of the game, 17-14. to 14. I officially marked myself as nervous at that point. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, the, the last low light is we got to finally address the elephant in the room, which is the status of Jordan Love. Uh, like I mentioned, it was a groin injury. LaFleur said that if he's good, he'll play next week, but it's till, still too early to say uh, for certain. So that's kind of a question mark. But at the end of the day, <laughs> Malik Willis is doing pretty solid. <laughs> he's not lost a game. I, I think I saw a stat today. I think I shared it with you, Wayne, that uh, Malik Willis has won more games as the Packers backup than Aaron Rodgers has as the starting quarterback for the Jets. Um, again, I don't like to wish ill will on, on uh, anybody in the league, especially somebody as prolific as, uh, as Aaron Rodgers, but that right. still was kind of a neat stat. Uh, also, Jair Alexander and Josh Jacobs both seem to be a little banged up late in the game. Looking forward to hearing good news on all these guys later this week. For now, it appears that Jair looks to have, uh, avoid, to have avoided needing knee surgery. So... Not sure what's uh, what's going to happen there, but it's looking more and more like that buy is going to come right at an opportune time for us. I will absolutely take it. And even if these injuries are better than originally feared, I'm most nervous about Jair's. Unless, of course, we bring back Jordan Love far too early again and re-aggravation happens because one bye week is not going to solve serious injuries. So let's take it easy, guys. Do what we can. 
And uh, totally. speaking of injuries and backups, that brings us to our weekly poll question. You can find it in our Facebook group at PackersCommunity.com, as well as on X at Packers Fan Pod, shortly after the week's game wraps up. I was out of town, didn't get to see most of the game until the next day. So Scott brings you this week's poll question. All right. This week's question is, what's your prediction about next week's quarterback position? This is, uh, we got four different uh, options here. The first is Love will be back to normal. The second is Love will play, but still nursing an injury. The third is Love will be out. Willis will be starting. And the fourth option is, who cares who's under center? Just feed the ball to Jacobs. (laughs) I'm curious where your thoughts are on here, Wayne. Well, I'm going to kind of split hairs. You, You mentioned that phrase earlier. I would like to say that we're going to hold Love out until he's 100% or as close to that as possible and let Willis get the start. But as far as predicting what's going to happen, I think Love's going to play. He's still going to be nursing an injury, and we're going to be nervous every single time he gets hit. All right. All right. You? Uh, I'm going to give a double answer a little bit. I'm going to say that Love should be out and Willis should be starting. Uh, I think that uh, it's going to be a tough game, but I think he's he's proven his chops, and it would be a really great opportunity for him to cement himself as a solid backup quarterback. If if not, if something bad happens down the road, um, but I don't think that's what they'll do. I think they'll play love, and he'll be nursing the injury. So that's what I think will happen. But what I think should happen is that he should be sitting out. Exactly. Let's go to see what the results were. This is after combining uh, all of the votes on Facebook. And that website owned by some rich guy. Uh, at the top, most everybody agreed with me. 56% said that Love will be out. Willis will be starting. Uh, actually, no, I said Love will play. But uh, I think it should be the other way. 33% said Love will play but still nursing an injury. 6% Love will be back to normal. And 5% said, who cares who's under center? Just give that ball to Jacobs. <laughs> nice. We also had some comments on the poll in the Packers Fan Podcast Facebook group. First off, Aaron Peterson said, I don't think Jacobs is as good as Jones was, but I'm starting to believe in Willis. Ooh, I like mm-hmm. that, Aaron. I, I think his uh, his argument was that you know Jacobs is a solid running back, but uh, Jones caught a lot more receptions as well. He played kind of both both ends of that position, whereas with Jacobs, we're seeing him run the ball more often than anything else, much more often, so... Yeah, and there's a bit more conversation back and forth about that in the Facebook group at PackersCommunity.com. Mm-hmm. Remember to be a part of the Packers Fan Podcast Facebook community and be part of the conversations at PackersCommunity.com. Check out all the fun, especially for our live game chat session during the Packers-Lions matchup. It's going to be a big game, guys. Real big game for so many reasons, but uh, definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, it's the game of the week. Tom Brady and company will be the announcers for this huge matchup. So let's find out some more about what you thought. We've got listener voicemails, emails, and stuff. Packers fans, we want you to let your voice be heard. Be part of the show. Recording your voice on your phone or your computer and then emailing that recording to feedback at PackersFanPodcast.com or by simply calling the PFP voicemail at plus one nine two zero three pack go In addition to your feedback about the Lions-Packers game, we also invite you to share your thoughts on the upcoming bye week for the team. Do you still think it's the perfect time for the bye? Will the pack be extra energized coming out of the bye to demolish the Bears? Inquiring minds want to know, as do Wayne and I. The deadline for your calls will be Monday at 6 p.m. Central, so be sure to get those in. What is our first voicemail, Wayne? Well, let's see. They called 920 3-Pack Go from the 920. Gentlemen. What a victory that was. Alex here from Appleton. Man, that was a nail-biter again. How about that dog, Malik Willis, man? (laughs) It's just impressive to be able to come into the game like that. And I read no first-team reps from him this week and get the job done. And, man, it just makes Monday so much better here on this victory Monday from the 9-2-0. Looking forward to the podcast and – Go Pack Go, got a big one this week in Green Bay. Going to need the crowd to show up, be loud, be extravagant, and get that dub and take care of the Lions. So Go Pack Go, have a great day, fellas. Go Pack Go, indeed. Thanks so much for the call, Alex. Great to hear from you. Love the enthusiasm. Just nothing but positive to say, short and sweet. Keep that positivity rolling, man. We're going to need it this coming week. 
Yes, and how about that Malik Willis? He brings a lot of uh, confidence, not only to himself and to the team, but to us as Packers fans watching the game. And I love how, you know, Willis and Love are just kind of polar opposites in terms of their attitude towards the field. It's kind of cool to see that dichotomy between them. You know, Love is is much more reserved. Even watching him on the bench, like whenever they have the camera on the bench, he's just kind of just zoomed in and focused like a tractor beam. You know what I mean? Like it's just nothing is distracting him. He is just laser focused. And then Willis on the field just uh, gets super excited when when awesome things happen. And I love, I, I, I just kind of like that we got two different personalities uh, available to us whenever we need them. Amen to that. Hi, Wayne and Scott. This is Megan calling post game from the Jaguars. A win is a win, right? It's another heart attack pack game, but you got to love it. Probably because we came out with the win. I got to start with McKinney. I love him. He's back starting a new streak. Um, Good for McKinney. (laughs) That was great. Tucker Craft being Tucker Craft, especially on tight ends day. I love the way he just like casually sauntered into the end zone on that touchdown. And then that other like catch and run earlier in the game was just, wow, my jaw was pretty much on the floor. He's super fun to watch. It's been really fun to watch him develop. Like I remember last season, he was kind of like, you know, second string. It was Luke Musgraves was like the guy, but obviously with him being on IR, Tucker has had to step up and, and he shines and it's fun to watch for sure. I got to talk about Malik. I have so much respect for him. So I was listening to the post game, his conference. And first of all, like I said earlier in the season, when he stepped up and did wonderful for us, he's so humble. Like he doesn't really, you know, maybe he pats himself on the back a little bit, but it's really like, he's just so humble about everything, even when he's He's carrying our team on his shoulders, but he got a whopping total of zero reps with the ones in practice this week, and he still came out and did that, and it just shows like his mental preparation and his commitment to the team to be able to step up and step in when needed and called upon, and I mean, that's that's what you're asking for in a backup, you know, and and he's great, and I wouldn't be surprised if we lost him, if, like if another team wanted him to start for them at some point, but I, I really like having him on the team, and I just feel like he's he's super committed and all in and like he must have like wicked me- mental preparation to be able to step in and do what he does and what he's done for us and like continue to do this season. I just feel like we all around do better as a football team when we don't just rely on Jordan passing the ball 57 times a game. Speaking of Jordan, like I said, I, I don't want him to not be our starter. He deserves to be our, star- our starter. He has like all the talent in the world. I just feel bad for him. I think it's frustrating to be injured and like of course I'm gonna say that he came back too soon from the knee injury and like if it's on the same side as his groin injury it's there there has to be some kind of a connection but he didn't look like he was very comfortable most of the game even when he was kind of hobbling around on it in the first half I wish we would have taken him out because you know all that like pressure on it whatever both injuries now I just feel like it's not going to be helpful big picture and like we have Detroit next week so I obviously have all the faith in Malik Willis but Jordan's our starter and it would it would be a bummer if he couldn't start next week but I mean I have faith in the rest of the team which goes to say that we do have a full well-rounded team and I feel like that's something we haven't said in a while because we haven't like we've relied a lot on offense the past few seasons and we have like such a solid defense. It's just super fun to watch them. And you know, they say defense wins championships. I think we fence like all phases win championships. And I really feel like that's what we have. Special teams, Brandon McManus coming and saving the day again. Last week I talked about like needing reliability at that position. And I mean, he's proving himself week after week, two weeks in a row. And I know it's only been two weeks, but like he seems so solid. I also think he's, I think it's funny that I refer to him as Brandon already. Like he's just already, he's already part of the squad. And like, I can, we're, we're totally on a first name basis, you know, <laughs> it's four in a row, baby, let's go. And now we have Detroit coming in next week. I know it's, it's for sure going to be a super big challenge. Of course, I will always predict the Packers to win, but I like, I don't want to be playing from behind the whole game. If we win the coin toss, I hope we take it and assert our dominance and go and just run down the field and score the ball, score a touchdown right away. I have like a lot of faith in the guys to, 
you know, play full four quarter football against a really good team at home, which is a huge advantage. But we will we will have to see. I'm very eager to watch that game and I hope it's a close matchup. I think it will be. We got to stay on. It's it's good to know we have so much depth at every position with people getting injured. It's just such a fun team. We're so lucky to be Packer fans. Just so lucky. That's all for now. I will sign off and call again next week. Go Pack Go, baby. Green and gold, play daddy cold. Let's go! We fence, we fence, we fence, <laughs> we fence. Megan, thank you so much sending that in. And I, too, am excited for Xavier McKinney to have his new interception streak already underway. He's got one out of one. So that's good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that Megan got her voice back after last week. Yes, yes. <laughs> Time heals all voices. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And she's already on a first name basis with Brandon. So if the game comes down to the final kick again, as long as he makes it and we win, we can all say, let's go, Brandon. And he's going to make it. <laughs> it's going to be a great score. And we're going to be victorious with the Wii fence. I think my favorite thing that Megan said was that we are so lucky to be Packers fans. Yes, indeed. You know what I mean? We have been Packers fans through thick and thin. Granted, we've had about, what, 30 years now <laughs> of really high-quality Packers football, but I, at least you and I, Wayne, and a lot of the Packers faithful have been fans of the Packers well before this era, this extended era uh, of Packers football, and uh, I, I just love that it's paid off for us as long as it has. Even, you know... It's been, what, since 2011 since we won a Super Bowl? But each year just seems so much fun, and it is just an absolute blast to be a, to be a Packers fan. So kudos to her for saying that. Go, 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 Pack, go! Yes, another victory to celebrate. Oh, uh, well, didn't come all that clean. Obviously, Love hurt himself on the first possession, it looked like. And he battled through it all the way to the third quarter and just had to give it up to uh, Malik Willis. And I tell you what, when he came in, I, I told the people that we were watching with, I was like, I have no problems coming into the, uh, with him coming into the game right now. I am fully confident he's going to get the job done. And he sure did. Um, he did what he had to do to manage the game. And Josh Jacobs, just he kind of saved our bacon between his huge run and on national tight end day, Tucker Yak and Cheese with that huge 58-yard run down the sideline, stiff-arming players. And, oh, God, it was so awesome to watch. In fact, we got uh, – I was watching at a bar with some friends. We had our own res reserved, like, party room. And uh, <laughs> it got so loud that they actually had to – it was requested that we uh, they shut the doors to the room. And then I went in today to go reserve uh, a the same room there here in the future – and um, I was talking to the bartender, and she said, yeah, after they shut the doors, we could still hear you guys. So that was pretty awesome. Um, it wasn't so awesome where the injuries, of course, already talked to, to, about love. Um, I, he had an MRI done on his uh, groin, and apparently that's uh, relatively minor. Still not sure if he's going to be playing the game. Um, definitely missed Evan Williams going out with a, a hamstring injury, but his uh, injury should also be um, minor. But anytime you get those soft tissue issues, um, those can linger for a long time. So if they need to stay out for you know a couple weeks through the through the Lions game, you know we got the bye coming out, and then uh, I think facing the Bears coming out of bye week, that's just fine with me. Um, the Jags really <laughs> they lost six of their players. One of them it looks like they're uh, uh, out for the season. In fact. Um, we just just don't seem to do really really all that great in Florida. Um, it shouldn't have come down to that tight of a game where McMagic had to go and do another walk off field goal for the second week in a row. Um, but he got it done. Um, one thing that's not been talked about too much that I've been hearing um, in the podcast and whatnot that I've been listening to is about Chris Brooks, the third string running back going down at the three-yard line instead of making a touchdown. That would have been his first NFL touchdown, and instead of being selfish, he knew to go down right there, and that way it allowed um, uh, Matt LaFleur and the coaching staff to manage the clock to the point where they could take it all the way down to the uh, down to two or three seconds to give us 
uh, the uh, opportunity to take make a, a chip shot field goal. Yeah, right now we're at the halfway point basically, and we're sitting at six and two, which I think is a mirror image of last year. I think we were going into this week at two and six. Um, the team's been showing flashes of brilliance, then stretches of uh, head scratching performance. All signs of a very good team that should be considered as Super Bowl contenders, but being the fact that they're a very young team, they've been very inconsistent. Um, with that being said, we're going uh, back to, back home to Lambeau Field to face the Detroit Lions, and I was going to predict the Lions win in this game. Uh, I went back and looked at the scores for uh, so, some of our uh, common opponent uh, common opponents. Uh, the Titans. With our second string quarterback, won thirty to fourteen. They they went fifty two to fourteen with their their uh, starting quarterback. You got Arizona. They won twenty to thirteen with their starter. We won thirty four to thirteen with our backup against the Vikings. Get this, both of us lost. Or well, they they won thirty one to twenty nine. We lost thirty one to twenty nine. So the same exact score. So with that being said, I'm going to predict a Green Bay Packers win. And it's going to be 31 to 28. And we're going to have another walk off field goal in McMagic style. One other thing I want to mention um, it's pretty crazy with the, the way the offense is, the, how much it's, the ball is spread around. There were 10 different wide receivers who were targeted, and six different players ran the ball. Uh, for, you know, some of those players are the same players. You know, got Jaden Reed who runs in you know, catches balls, but that's 16 different players. That gives us the opportunity to really spread the ball around and gives opposing defenses um, a lot to think about when they come up with their game plan. And I want to coin a new term. Instead of calling it an offense based on the fact that we have so many players that are, have their hands in the cookie jar, let's call it a wee fence. Go, 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 pack, go! Also, I want to give a shout out real quick to Andres in LA. Haven't heard you for a while. Come on, blink twice if you're okay. We need to hear that. Go back, go! Go pack, go indeed. Uh, thanks so much, Dan, for the call. What are the chances that both Megan and Dan are going to mention WeFence? <laughs> Not that's sure. Just insane to me. It's I think we started thing. something. We but fence, yeah. we fence, we fence. I like it. I like it. Shout out to Andre. Yeah, where is Andre? I miss I miss him. Andre, if you're listening, man, please give us a call. Let us know you're okay. Um, I, I like what Dan said about not feeling nervous when Will, when uh, Willis came out. You know, in the past when our top quarterback is injured, it's like, oh, great, here we go. But it's such a crazy feeling to know, you know, that sucks. But we still got this. I don't remember ever feeling that way. About our, uh, about our quarterback position, it's always like we got that star quarterback, and that like I've mentioned it even in the past with with our our wide receivers and our defensive players. We don't have just that one star; we have a team, and that is what I'm loving about this this Packers um, organization. Is it's not about the stars; it's about a cohesive team, and that is why they are as young as they are able to be as successful as they are right now. I absolutely love where the where the team is going right now. It's fantastic stuff. And the fact mm -hmm. that uh, we have a third string, very young running back, Chris Brooks, taking one for the team. And instead of getting his first ever NFL touchdown, he went down before crossing the goal line to save clock time. And that was fantastic and really helped us win this game. And for that, hopefully this weekend, he can get a touchdown against the Lions at Lambeau Field and do his first ever Lambeau leap after getting his first ever touchdown. Absolutely. What a, what a team player. I mean, to give up your first touchdown as a, as a, in the NFL, that's, that's amazing. Uh, he, he mentioned about having so many potential offensive targets. Uh, that's obviously a plus as well. Um, I'm, I'm going to be referring to that a little bit in my keys to victory in a little while, but uh, that uh, he's probably right. I maybe I should have adjusted my keys a little bit. That's what's going to make it difficult for the Lions to to plan against us. But uh, more on that later. We also did get an email it comes from James in Montana. He says, "Go Pack, go! Happy Victory Tuesday! 
It's always good to see the Packers win and the Vikings and Bears lose. Also, could the Bears have lost in a more enjoyable way? I think not. The Packers earned a tough win, but a win nonetheless. I know that LaFleur said he doesn't believe in trap games, but this sure felt like a trap game. Florida games have not gone well for us recently, and this one was no exception, but the team persevered. We won the turnover battle, and that was the deciding factor in the game. A few injuries that I hoped are just because of the Florida heat that will heal quickly. Fingers crossed. Love definitely did not seem like himself out there. Malik Willis has again proved to be the perfect backup for Love. He stepped in and didn't miss a beat. Another week and another game-winning kick by Brandon McManus. I can't help but think that we'd have lost at least one of these games if we stuck with our old kicker. I just hope we can get healthy by next weekend, especially with the Lions coming to town. I feel like their huge 52-14 to victory against the Titans could make them overconfident. We will see, but I believe in this team and this coaching staff. I absolutely love Matt LaFleur's quote from the locker room. Quote, the strength of our team is our team. Unquote. Go Pack Go. Bring on the Lions, James from Montana. Lots of great stuff there, James. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah, I think I'm a little misty-eyed. I'm going to need a Kleenex. I wouldn't be surprised if we beat the Lions this week in the uh, locker room. LeFleur is going to reference we fence <laughs> and it'll all come full circle. And yeah, the, the Lions rolling up the score, it just unjustly all the way to 52 points. Fortunately, I think even the Lions know better than to do that against a divisional opponent that they still have to play again later in the season and would certainly find a way to get revenge if they did something like that to us or to any other team in our division. Yeah, pretty much. So with that, let's take a look at that game. You're six and two, and boy, doesn't that sound great to say. You're six and two Green Bay Packers are thankfully back at Lambeau to host the six and one Detroit Lions Sunday, November 3rd at 3.25 p.m. Central Time on Fox. And of course, most of the uh, states here in the U.S., we set our clocks back an hour Saturday night. So uh, for our friends overseas, this could cause weird game kickoff times to appear on your television sets, to be sure. The Green Bay Packers lead this series 106 victories to 76 losses and seven ties, going back to when the existing Bank of Italy changed their name to Bank of America. And on November 2nd, 1930, the Packers beat the then-named Portsmouth Spartans 47 to 13, Scott. The game was in Ooh. Green Bay, and not only a great way to start this historic series, but would also be the perfect score to maybe replicate this coming Sunday. Just saying. Oh, man. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. <laughs> That'd be a lot of Lambo leaps, and I'd be here watching it with glee. The Packers and Lions, you know, they have met at least twice a season, every season since 1932, without any canceled games making it still the longest continuously running rivalry in the NFL. Can I get a go, Pat, go? Go, Pat, go indeed. And from November of 1940 until October of 1948, the Lions only beat us one time. And that's out of 16 games played. And during that span, how about we travel back to October 1945, Scott? We can watch the Packers score 57 points on the Lions and Green Bay. 57 points. That's even <laughs> unfathomable. <laughs> but by today's standards for sure. That's just a that's just a buttload of points. But much like the Fight Club, let's not talk about the period from the end of 49 through all of 1954. Just not going to talk about it. Uh my <laughs> pick for one of the most memorable Packers Lions games would be January of 1994, which was the first time we ever played against each other in the playoffs. Yeah, I said playoffs. Brett Favre hit Sterling Sharp for a 40-yard touchdown pass with 55 seconds left in the game, helping give Green Bay the win. And fun fact, this was the first time the Lions had ever lost a home playoff game Mm. and was also their last home playoff game for 30 years. Thank you, Brett Favre and Sterling (laughs) Sharp, for helping make that happen. Now, this coming Sunday at Lambeau Field, it should be cloudy with just a 20% chance of rain. Should be around 59 degrees Fahrenheit at kickoff. That's 15 degrees Celsius. This kind of forecast sounds like Packers perfect football weather to my ears. Absolutely, man. Uh, it is That is starting to feel 
like football weather instead of this 80 degree garbage. <laughs> it's not football weather for the Packers. Absolutely. And with all of those things rolling in our favor, what are the Packers going to do to get a victory over the Lions? Do you got some keys on that key ring, Scott? I do, Wayne. And my first one's going to feel very contradictory to what Dan mentioned earlier, but my first strategy is going to be to lean on Jacobs. It's still a question mark who's going to be taking snaps this week. Even if Love is playing, he probably won't be 100%. And while I have a lot more confidence in Willis than I did at the beginning of the season, he still has to prove that he's the long haul backup for the team because he hasn't faced the Lions or, you know, teams of that caliber. I'd like to see the Packers play it safe again this week and rely on Josh Jacobs to win the game on the ground. But also, don't be afraid to dish it out to him instead of just running up the middle. He's a solid running back that's giving Green Bay the running game they deserve, and the Pack should utilize it. Strategy number two, safe throws. I love exploding passing plays as much as the next guy, but some of the passes we've been seeing lately have instilled a sense of fear in me. I don't want another Brett Favre, and I don't want another... Aaron Rodgers, I want a solid, fundamental quarterback who's going to make smart throws not into double or triple coverage. The Packers shouldn't be trying to force long passing plays, but instead focus on moving the chains with safe throws to keep the series alive and keep the Lions' defense on the field as much as possible. Lastly, have faith in your defense. The Lions have had a solid streak of offense, but it's worth noting that they've had a much easier schedule than other teams. The last two games were against defenses that were less than stellar. Now they face the Packers, who are a much more formidable force than the teams they've faced so far. This is the moment for the Green Bay defense to do what they've done best this year and then some, pressuring the quarterback, forcing turnovers, and stopping the run. Keep them off the field with as much, uh, as, much as possible and let them win this game for us. With the offense having a huge question mark floating over it with a quarterback position, it's time to trust the defense, and it's never been any easier to do just that. Oh, yes. Go pack. <laughs> go, Scott, with those keys to victory. I'm ready for Sunday. Cannot wait. That's going to be a great game. My, uh, I, I have to pick up my wife from the airport Sunday morning, uh, actually from the bus station. She's going to take the bus into town. But uh, pick her up, come back, spend the rest of the day watching football. It's going to be a great, great Sunday. Hopefully it's nice out. I can we can actually watch the game out on the deck. Again, Ooh, we did that, uh, that nice new patio deck you got there. Yeah. Let's talk about our 2024 season wager of fun. Last week the final score was Green Bay 30, Jacksonville 27. My prediction was 33-21 in favor of the of the Packers. Wayne predicted 36-24 in favor of the Packers. And Wayne, would you believe it? For the third week in a row, you and I had the exact same differential. <laughs> Nine <laughs> points differential for both of us. So that means for the third week in a row, neither one of us gets a point. Wow. That's just insane to me. What are the chances? I don't what know. What are the chances? Even doing three uh, ties in one season is something we've never done. So yeah, I don't know. Let's shake it up this week, Scott. But how are the All listeners right. doing with their picks? Because last I heard, there was a five-way tie for first place. There was a five-way tie. We do have a new leader uh, that comes in the name Brett Connor from the UK, who predicted Green Bay 30, Jacksonville 21. Mm-hmm. There's a differential of only six points, so that gives him the win, and that puts him in the lead. Like I said, he's now got two wins, while there is a four-way tie for second place between David Newman, Jay Walters, Garrett Stritzel, and Dan Dyler. As for you and I, Wayne, it's still 3-0 to zero in favor of you. I have yet to get a win. So I think this is my week, and I'm going to shake things up and make it nearly impossible for us to tie this week, uh, have the same differential, because um, I am sadly going to pick Detroit to win this game. I think that uh, <laughs> wow. it is, I, I, I know, man, don't, don't hate me. Didn't you just don't have keys me. to victory, Scott? Your pack I did have keys, keys to victory. I do have keys to victory, man, but I think that uh, Detroit is on fire, and they've got something lit under them that is keeping them going. They are racking up points, and our defense is going to hold hold uh, strong, but I think Detroit's going to come out ahead. I'm going to say Detroit 24, Green Bay 20, and I hope I'm wrong. How about you? <laughs> I like that at least you hope you're wrong, because well, yeah. it, it seems like you're just trying to make sure that we don't tie again this week, and that, that <laughs> definitely will not happen because... I am picking a Packers victory, people. I mean, sure, it's not going to be two or three touchdowns of victory, though I would not be opposed to that. Packers 23, 
Lions only 21. Whack, whack, go, pack, go, we win. You know, there is a possibility of us tying. If there, if the game ends in a tie, then <laughs> you and I tie, Wayne. So, oh, wow. We, we could have four in a week. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess there's always that possibility. Wow. <laughs> Here are the Packers Fan Podcast listener picks for week number nine of the PFU Wager of Fun. Brett Connor in the UK, our, cha- our uh, current leader, said, quote, I feel like I'm going to have to break the tradition of picking wins here. Sorry, Green Bay 21, Detroit 24. He's actually very close to my pick as well. So Yeah, just one point difference. Yeah. Garrett Stritzel said Green Bay is still going to come out on top 20 to 17. Jay Walter says Green Bay 27, Detroit I'm sorry, Green Bay 29, Detroit 27. And Dan Dyler, as you heard earlier, said Green Bay 31, Detroit 28. All right, let's see what happens. The NFC North, Lions are 6-1, and one, Packers are 6-2. and two. That could drastically change if we beat them on Sunday. Uh, the Vikes, they fall to 5-2, and two, and that's just too bad. And the Bears are 4-3 and three because the Bears still suck, a.k.a. the Bears still come up with new and exciting ways to embarrass themselves And I'm here for it. The way that that game ended and they lost at the very end by allowing not only the commanders to throw a a Hail Mary, it was like 60 yards or something, and it worked because the ball was tipped by a bear and tipped right into the hands of a commander. And to make it even more Bears-like, the Bears player that tipped the ball was the same one that didn't even participate in the first few seconds of the play because while the play was happening, he was too busy taunting the fans in the stands at the Washington Commander Stadium. I mean, I watched that like five times going, this guy's the biggest <laughs> flipping idiot I've seen in a long time. Oh, wait, the play's actually going to happen. Oh, let me just tip it right to, oh. So, <laughs> sucks for them. just brutal. I mean, <laughs> again, I'm... I. It, The Bears make it really difficult for me to be, you know, (laughs) that kind of fan that just doesn't want to hate on them. But but it it was hard. My wife and I are watching the game live, and it was just like, oh, yeah, Hail Mary. That's not going to happen. And it tipped and just went right into the dude's hands. We're like, oh, oh. It was was just kind of of a – it's hard not to revel in that, man. It's really hard. I'm trying to be the better person, but they make not it me. so easy sometimes. Not me. <laughs> because it's one thing to accidentally tip it right into the other player's hands to give away the victory. But to find out it's the same guy who's busy taunting the fans while the play was already happening. Yeah. Oh, my it's goodness. Kind of nuts. So the week nine in the NFL is coming up this weekend. We're back to having bye weeks. The Steelers are off. And thankfully, the San Francisco 49ers are also on a buy, so it's fantastic that I don't have to see them anywhere on my television sets this weekend. Absolutely. Before we head out of here, I want to remind you guys of my other podcast, The Gaming Outsider. We got a new episode out this Thursday where we are uh, we had a little fun this week. We, uh, we played a little game called Describe a Video Game Poorly. We're going to kind of, uh, kind of <laughs> I quiz do that. each other. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to describe a game poorly and see if everybody can guess which one we're talking about. We even had some listeners join in with some suggestions and had a blast with it. You can hear my show at the same place as you listen to this one, and you can find our website at thegamingoutsider.com. Thanks again for financially supporting the old PFP through Patreon. Go Pack Go, and thank you to Jay Walters for your Bart Star patronage. And thank you and Go Pack Go, Mr. Dan Dyler, for your Jordan Love level of support. We greatly appreciate it. And of course, we certainly have thank yous and Go Pack Goes for our Brett Favre level pledges. Scott Bores, Miguel Ramirez from the Opposites Attract podcast, and Megan. Also, Go Pack Go, and thank you going out to these Lambo inspired supporters, Joe Christensen. Brett Connor and Hank Davis from the TPE network of podcasts. If you're interested in joining in, all the details are at PackersFanPodcast.com slash give back. As always, the unofficial Packers Fan Podcast is not affiliated with the NFL or the Green Bay Packers. So please tell a friend about the show. And with that extra hour coming this weekend due to the time change in most of the U.S., that's bonus time that you can use to... Uh, Share the love of the Packers Fan Podcast to all of your friends and families, total strangers. Um, Iris working the the register at the local grocery store. Um, Anybody you can find. Go Pack Go. (laughs) 
We also invite you to follow us on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we are at Packers Fan Pod. My personal handle is at GoCast Scott. If you'd like to follow my Gaming Outsider podcast, the handle is at The GoCast. And Wayne's is at Wayne Henderson. And now here's our PFP community members, Joe Christensen, Dan Dyler, Megan, and Andre to root the pack onto a shocking victory over the Lions. Go Pack! Go! Go Pack! Go! Go Pack! Go! 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 Go!